Hi, this is Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth, and you're watching Chaos TV. What's up, everybody? Chaos TV is today here at Yalo Metalli Festival in Oulu, Finland, and we have here guest Danny Filth from Cradle of Filth. So, first of hello and welcome to Chaos TV for the first time. Greetings. So today you're gonna perform here at the Alo Metalli in Oulu and you have of course played in Finland several times before as well so well, how much are you looking forward to the show tonight? A lot. What I'm not looking forward to is the fact that we're gonna play Brutal Assault tomorrow and uh, it means literally no sleep <laughs> because we've got to leave for, for, for the airport about two o'clock in the morning. So I get to watch Saxon then I get back to the hotel, have a quick shower then on the plane but yeah no really looking forward to it it was really horrible weather early on i thought ugh it's kind of brightening up now so it's yeah. not quite so so bad but yeah no really looking forward to it the bands that I played before battle beast uh don't know who these are but sound all right hell are playing next so yeah yeah it's, really it's a decent lineup it's a good lineup and i wish i was here tomorrow because uh, i'd like to see uh shining and annihilator and I'm sure there's someone else I wanted to see tomorrow as well, I can't remember. Uh, Candlemas, yeah. yeah. Um, but we're about to announce, uh, how do you say it in uh, Finnish? Tem tempere? Tampere. That's it. <laughs> Tem Try it. Tampere. Okay. Okay, well anyway, we're about to announce that for our European show. We weren't allowed to announce it because of this festival, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, of course. So people were going, why not you play in Finland? And we went, well, we, we didn't say anything because we couldn't. But yeah, I'm saying we are. Um, I can't remember the date, but it's, I think it's like 20th of November, something like that, around there. Okay, so last time when you guys were here, you played in a club and now you're playing in a daylight in a festival. So which do you oh, prefer yourself? Be, uh, is it still gonna be daylight? Of course it is, it's yeah. Finland, it's like yeah, it's, day. it's Finland and summer. Shit. Well, at least the sun be behind the stage. <laughs> Um, if that helps. <laughs> well, yeah, it'll help rather than being straight in your face. Yeah. Um, well, obviously it's different, yeah. It seems like every time we come to Finland, it's perpetual darkness. And uh, and now it's perpetual sunlight. Weird. But cool. But weird. So, that your latest album, Hammer of the Witches, has been out for a month now. And So, what kind of feedback have you, like, overall gotten from the album? And have you been pleased with it? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've done over 300, I think it's about 340-ish. I lost count actually. I was keeping count up until about 315 and then we did a load of festivals and uh, unannounced interviews and things like that. Um, and so I was only getting the opinion of journalists, but they were all really raving about it, which was a good sign. Um, and since its release, yeah, we've had loads of good press from, from, from feedback from fans and what have you. So yeah. A job done, I think. Uh, yeah, we're proud of it. It's a great record. And now we're looking forward to taking it out on the road. That's our European tour starts mid-October until December. Go to South America then, and then uh, beginning next year, uh, US tour, US Canadian tour, um, then Russia, Australia, etc., etc. So yeah, cool. So with the new album, you also had like a couple of lineup changes that you have like three new members on the new album, and and yeah. during well, your really, well, they seem like three new members to everybody else, but they've been in the band quite a while actually. New to the album, yeah. Yeah. Um, they, it was out of necessity for the two guitarists. Um, we've always had before session keyboard players, and um, they've left, you know, either to start families or you know, uh, relocate. Um, and so that's never been a problem, but you know, we've got official lineup now. And um, the two guitarists were brought in for the, the co-headline tour that we did with Behemoth at the beginning of last year. Yeah. Um, and that was because one of the guitarists couldn't do it for personal reasons. He'd moved to America, loads of shit happened, etc., etc. Not Not really sure what happened there, other than he couldn't do it. Um, and then closer to the tour, we found out that our guitarist who'd been suffering quite a severe neck problem was having to undergo major surgery so he couldn't even pick a guitar up let alone go on tour yeah so it was born out of necessity and the band have just grown really strong since then 
So how do you feel like that the like lineup changes has has actually like affected the band throughout the years, well, or have have you always always had like certain kind of vision that how would you like the band to sound? Well, I think it's always been um, it's always been the band not just it's not just me i don't dictate that everything if that was the case it would have fallen apart a long time ago yeah and uh, people believe in what cradle filth stand for and the ideologies and everything that goes around it the camaraderie they know they're going to get a lot of shit from people they also know they're going to get a lot of popularity you know yeah. we want to love it love us or hate us bands um you know and it's 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 a music form first and foremost but then we indulge in lots of other things that make make cradle of filth but it's it's just the same as if you were to um you know ask you about your tv station i'm sure you're not the same people work at your tv station yeah, yeah. constantly of course there's member chases there as well. well yeah exactly and and it's either like you know you can we could have fallen under the first hurdle really back in 95 when half of the band literally the band split in half yeah. half the band went to court with our record company and the other half went to form another band altogether um, we could have fallen under the first hurdle there but it's a case of you know believing in what we want to do and thinking well fuck it you know we've got to carry on uh, next year you go, 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 are going to release like the dusk and her embrace like as as a different version album. Well, it was an album that it was the version that was recorded um, before that split that I spoke of yeah. in '95, and the three members that stayed that was myself, Nicholas Barker on drums, and Robin Graves on bass. Uh, we reformed the band, won the court case against our record company, and then took the rights for that album we gave the record company vampire which is technically an ep but the record company sold it as an album and then we took the rights for that first recording the one you're talking about yeah. and had to re-record it for our next record label which was music for nations so the original version of that has been sitting gathering dusk on some record company exec shelf for well, it would have been 20 years next year. So where did you get like the idea to put it out? In we the didn't. End? The record company uh, approached us about it, and uh, it, it won't come out if they don't, you know, adhere to, because it's, it's the same record company that we took to court all those years ago. So okay, technically it is coming out, but there's a few things that we have to set in place to set in motion that we don't want mucked around with again. So yeah, technically it is coming out uh, March, I think. Yeah. Will you do like some kind of like mastering, mixing to it, or is it gonna be like the original recording? It's gonna be like the original because it's not. There's n um, It's just a, a a stereo mix. Yeah. For some reason, that's the only thing that survived was a DAT tape with a stereo mix. It can be remastered. Okay. No problem, but there's no altering anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so. It will sound 20 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was what I was like aiming for that is it gonna be sounding like back in the day so oh, yeah yeah I mean no, no, no reamping no nothing like that we can't because it's uh, like I say yeah just a stereo pair so we have this kind of like article on our site where musicians has to pick like five albums that has been like the main inspiration to them as a musician so if you would have to choose like five albums that has basically influenced you the most as a musician which albums would you choose and why Oh god! Well, I would say this one album, but you wouldn't you wouldn't know it. So um. just say it. I guess <laughs> oh, I can't. I, your your fans might know it. Still. Okay, no, they probably won't. It's uh, Jeff Wayne's uh, "The War of the Worlds," based on H.G. Wells's classic novel. Uh, it was done in the seventies. They still do it now. It's uh, they're doing doing it like a like a stage production. A lot of famous people in it. And originally, it was narrated by Richard Burton. It's a musical, but it's about the invasion of the world in the Victorian age by Martians. Okay. Tom Cruise did a film based on it, but in the book they build like that big tripods that stalk over Victorian England and kill everyone with heat rays. And they made a musical out of it, but it's really apocalyptic. You know, okay. full orchestra. Um, I actually went to audition for the live production of it, but uh, a few years ago, um, I didn't get it because. Um, it fell in the same time as Crater were doing other stuff, which was a shame. But it's my, it literally is my favourite album. It's, it's got to hear it to believe it. It's just amazing. Phil Linnett was on it as well. In fact, I was going to be playing his part because he played the part of a parson. It sounds dreadful, okay, but it actually is brilliant, honestly. So that, I'd say Don't Break the Oath by Merciful Fate. 
love that record. Uh, I'd go for a maiden now, so I'd say Power Slave, just just because I can. Just immediately thought of that Power Slave. Um, Is there some certain album that has influenced you as a vocalist the most? Um, I d- I, maybe Rain in Blood. Um, but there was a there was a band back in the day called Razor. Well, they're still around, but it's not the same band. Razor. And there was an album called Malicious Intent where the guy just screamed, you know, all the way through. And I was like, that is so cool. Um, he actually didn't do it for the next record. It was very strange. But um, Malicious Intent by Razor was vocally um, cool. But yeah, King Diamond was always a, a big influence. Um, I think that's... well. But if I was going to go for... Um, like a black metal album that came out literally around the same time as that Dusk version that you're talking about yeah. uh, was probably in the Night Side Eclipse by Emperor okay now everybody who was into Emperor always said oh I prefer anthems or the other ones they're more technically astute but the thing with uh, in the Night Side Eclipse it, there was just something about it you know it was the amalgam of the big soaring orchestration and the the choirs and you know it's a bit of a racket really but it's it sounds organic there's something about it that you could go out and look at the mountains at night and just get absorbed by it you know it's like a creature more than a than a set of musicians so do you feel that those albums basically you can hear those influences through your music nowadays um probably maybe yeah somewhere okay Yeah, I think so. But then we're we're six musicians and seven if you consider the the uh, producer on uh, on the new album Hammer of the Witches had a big part to play in the way the album went. So you have to take everybody else's yeah. musical uh, inspirations into account as well. Okay, so thank you, Danny, oh, yeah, very much for your thank time you. and best of luck for tonight's show as well as for the future. Yes. Uh, anything you want to say as last words to your fans watching the interview? You can uh, hold the microphone. Yeah, yourself. thank you. I don't know how to hold a mic. Oh, what's this for? <laughs> um, yeah, just thank you very much for supporting Cradle of Filth. Um, and we'll be playing at... Tampere. There we go. There we, we'll be playing <laughs> at... Uh, Tampax. Uh, we're playing in Tampax. Um, Yeah, and just thank you everybody. New album Hammer the Witch is, is out now. If you want to keep abreast of anything to do with Cradle of Filth, obviously a social media platform, uh, Facebook, Cradle of Filth or Danny Filth, one of the same really, and or cradleoffilth.com. And yeah, just keep it mail. Thanks, man. Brilliant, thank you.